alih wa ashabi ajma'in amma ba'd today inshallah we'll start this series of lectures sahih al adab al islamiyya the authentic islamic manners <coughs> how is a muslim supposed to live the islamic life practically that is the benefit of these lectures how does a muslim leave islam practically because there's a huge um gap if you want to call it that between us and islam in this manner we are muslims but some you see them they live just like the non muslim there's no difference there's no difference it's not supposed to be like that and through this you'll understand better one of the main principles of islam which is to be different from the mushrikun in the way you carry yourself in the way you carry yourself that is why one of the main principles of islam is nahyu an tashabbuh bil kuffar is the prohibition from resembling the kuffar the kuffar so this is the main benefit of this lectures and secondly for all those who love their prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the way to learn how he was and who he was so that you follow him in his in his footsteps these lectures like the sheikh himself he mentioned and this is from the book i'll be reading from the book by sheikh wahid abdul salam bali from the contemporary scholars sheikh so shayukh in uh, every parent who wants to cultivate and bring up his children on the islamic manners this book is for every muslim who wants to practice his deen so inshallah we'll be reading and hopefully allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefits us to practice practically whatever we're saying is meant to be a practical application a practical application now before i start from the practical applications of seeking knowledge this is a great ibadah all of us have known that is that if your back is not problematic and you're not of old age you have to come closer you have to come closer the walls will not fall i can promise you that naam so come close unless you're old or your back has problems you can sit on the wall you can sit on the wall your knee is bad khalas say so at least the brother you brought his chair close this is from the adab of the muslims unity this is unity this is unity the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once he was traveling with his sahaba and when they took camp they took a rest they camped everybody took his corner and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam became angry he said mali arakum izin what is it that i see you separated what is wrong with you the sahabi who narrated this hadith he said from that day whenever we took camp we'll be close to each other to to the to the point that if you are to spread one bed sheet or one comforter you can cover all of us this book i'm repeating again is supposed to be a practical application of islam and that includes everything you'll do every day to make it simple so it starts in the manners of waking up what are the manners of waking up we someone says subhanallah there's manners of waking up yes and this is the beauty of islam one of the things we are proud of is that our deen <coughs> did not leave anything which we need in our life which is essential except that we are taught well the other religions and this is one of the point to prove that they are not true religions although have is saturday to go to mass on saturday and khalas and you go they think they're going to paradise or all they have in sunday to go to mass or all of some of them go to sin at the synagogue on saturday and they're saved no they don't have rules of eating or drinking let alone business how to run businesses and deal with money how to deal with the matters of nikah and talaq they don't have that this is the beauty of islam the sheikh <coughs> without taking further ado he began with adab al istiqad the manners of waking up now before you ask me is there the book is available in english no it's not available in english it's available in arabic though 
If you want to follow, you can get the book in Arabic. If you just search Sahih Adab al Islamiyah, the book will come by Sheikh Wahid Abdul Salam Bali. Sahih Adab al Islamiyah. From the manners of waking up, <coughs> and this is how the book it is, is that he mentions the point, the chapter, like this chapter of waking up. So he'll mention point number one and his proof, the hadith or the ayah. Point number two and his proof. Like that. Number one, from the adab al-istiqad. Dhikrullahi inda al-istiqad. Doing the dhikr, remembering Allah and mentioning and glorifying Allah when you wake up. That is number one and is the first thing in the life of a Muslim when you begin a new day. The first thing you do is remember your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are the true Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ Say to them, proclaim, إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ Say to them, my prayers and my nusuk, my rites of hajj, and mahyaya and my whole life and my death is for Allah. Everything I do is for Allah. He has no partner. So the first thing you do when you wake up, when you start a new day, you're giving back life because sleep is the, the brother or the sister of death. Sleep is like death. The first thing you do is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to glorify him. This hadith reported by Bukhari, the hadith of Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, قال, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أخذ مضجعه من الليل وضع يده تحت خده وفي رواية وضع يده اليمنى على خده ثم يقول اللهم باسمك أموت وأحيا وإذا استيقظ قال الحمد لله الذي أحيانا بعدما أماتنا وإليه النشور The hadith reported by Bukhari عليه رحمة الله The hadith of Hudayf ibn al-Yaman رضي الله عنهما He says كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He used to إذا أخذ مضجعه من الليل When he goes to sleep at night وضع يده على خده He would put his right hand under his right cheek Even though we're talking about the manners of Waking up But we'll touch on sleeping That is how you sleep No, we started waking up Then we'll go and After you wake up most of the time you go to the Washroom أعزكم الله Right? Then you go make wudu Then you pray We'll go step by step Then you go to work then later on we'll finish off with what? Sleeping. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would take to bed, when he go to sleep, he'd put his right hand under his right cheek, meaning you sleep on your right side. That is the sunnah. That is the sunnah. You can sleep on your right side, it's not wrong, but you have left what is better. You can sleep on your right side. You have, can sleep on your right side, that is what is best. But if you sleep on your left side, you have left what is better. So he'd put his hand, his palm under his cheek and he'd sleep like that. And he would say one of the many du'as before sleeping, he would say, Bismika Allahumma, Allahumma bismika, amutu ahya. Oh Allah, by your name, I die and I live. Like we just mentioned, sleep is there partner of death by your name O Allah I sleep and I wake up by your name Allah I die and I live what does by your name mean like when you say when you want to eat you say bismillah we'll talk about this when you want to drink you say bismillah when you want to start something like uh, taking off your clothes you say bismillah what does it mean what does it mean what does it mean? It's the name of Allah, I know. 
begin by the will or with the will or with the permission of Allah. Mm, mashallah. Good. You have something else? Something exactly. If you, because you're going to scare me if you say the same thing and your minds are synchronized or something. <laughs> I know you have something more. Give me that more. Same thing. Same, same. <laughs> Ahsan, the word blessing. He said assistance, the will of Allah. That is right. You mention the name of Allah. It is saying, I begin this action by mentioning the name of Allah, seeking His blessings and His his will and his permission to make it easy for me. That is what Bismillah means. By the name of Allah, it means I begin this action. The action, you don't mention it. It says Bismillah for eating, Bismillah for drinking, Bismillah for taking off your clothes. All of it, but it means what? I begin by mentioning the name of Allah so that to seek his blessings and that he makes it easy for me. وَإِذَا اسْتَيْقَضَى And this is what we want. And when he wakes up, when the Prophet وسلم, when he would wake up, the first thing you'd say is, أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَحْيَانَ بَعْدَ مَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورُ أَلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَحْيَانَ بَعْدَ مَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورُ most of these adhkar will mention, if not all of them, are available in the small book, Hisnul Muslim, Fortification of the Muslim. Everybody has to have that book, especially to know the things you have to say every day. Who does not have that book, by show of hands, will give it to you for free. It's free. No fine print, yeah, and it's free, free. Yeah. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah, around 10 people. Alhamdulillah, alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. That is the dhikr, the first thing you say when you wake up. Literally, or tr literal translation would mean Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah means what? All the perfect praise and thanks belongs to Allah. All the perfect praise and thanks belongs to Allah. Allah who has done what? Alladhi ahyana, the one who gave us life. Ba'dama amatana, after he had made us die, meaning in sleep. Wa ilayhi nushur, and to him is the return. Yani in this dua, every day when you wake up, you're supposed to remember the day you'll be resurrected from your grave. Wa ilayhi nushur. And that day when we'll be put to sleep and then we'll be woken up to be resurrected. So that is the first thing you say when you wake up. After you wake up, after you wake up, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he directed us. He said, in the hadith of Abu Hurairah in Bukhara and Muslim, يعقد الشيطان على قافية, على قافية رأس أحدكم إذ هو نائم ثلاثة عقد When one of you sleeps the shaitan he makes three knots on your head three knots like the knots the magicians they do Allah says all of us know those surahs we seek refuge من شر النفاثات في العقد العقد the magicians, that's how they do their magic, most of them. They make those notes and they blow in whatever shirk they say. The shaitan, he does that notes on you also when you sleep and me. Three notes. But you just can't see them because that is another world they live. The shayatin. And what kind of magic is he doing to you if you want to call it magic? These notes. He says over all these all these three knots, he says to you, you have a long night, keep sleeping. So that you miss Salat al Fajr. You have a long night, keep sleeping. But when you wake up, Fadakar Allah and the first thing you do is you remember Allah, the dhikr we just mentioned. Alhamdulillah ladhi ahyana ba'dama. 
amatana wa ilayhi an-nushur when you remember allah the first thing you wake up in halat uqdatun one of those knots is undone fa in tawadda and then you go and you make wudu in halat uqdatun another of the second of those three knots is undone fa in salla and then you go and you pray in halat uqdatun the third of the remaining ones it is undone fa asbaha nashitun tayyiban nafsin and so you wake up and the whole day you are nashit full of energy tayyibun nafs you are good with yourself you feel good wa illa and if not you miss fajr asbaha khabith an nafs kaslan you wake up you don't feel good naturally kaslan and lazy subhanallah that is one of the great secrets behind salat al fajr behind salat al fajr three knots dhikr of allah al wudu and then to actually pray and then to actually pray now we mention after dhikr of allah we mention that he said wudu but you just don't go and make wudu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he explained to us when you wake up you have said the dhikr of waking up now you go to the washroom wherever you are to make wudu from the manners which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he taught us after waking up before you put your hands in the water and this is usually for most of those people who live in places where they have no taps so the water is in a vessel in a container it is not allowed when you wake up to directly put your hands into the container first of all the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that stay qada ahadukum when one of you wakes up he should not put his hands in the container of water even if you do wudu first you should do what you take the water and wash your hands three times you wash your hands three times now does this apply to those of us who don't use the containers use the taps yes because this is ibada this is ibada because the najasa you're removing is not najasa hisiyan it's not an impurity which is on your hand it doesn't mean your hand is unclean no but it is najasa ma'nawiya like we just saw in the previous hadith the shaitan plays with you when you are sleeping you don't know what is happening and it has been proven medically it is one of those ways to make you what we can say wake up properly when you wash your hands especially with water which is a bit um cool or let's say cold it wakes you up so the first thing you do after the dhikr of allah when you go to the washroom or wherever you clean your hands three times and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said after doing that wal yastanthir thalathan and let him do the istinthar drawing water into the nose trills and blowing it out three times fa inna shaitana yabitu ala khaishumi because the shaitan he stays inside of your noses when you wake up you wash your hands after washing those hands you take water just like in wudu and you draw the water into your nose and you take it out second time and third time now you are woken up now you do wudu now you do wudu or even before wudu even before wudu you can do what you do the miswak you use the siwak the tooth stick if you don't use the tooth stick you use the toothbrush this is from the sunnah the practical ways of islam you use the the siwak again from the hadith of hudayfa in the sahihain bukhari muslim he says kana an nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam idha qama min al layl yashusu fahu bis siwak the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to wake up he would what he would clean his mouth with the toothbrush or the tooth stick proper hygiene is an essential part of our religion proper hygiene 
is an essential part. And lastly, in the manners of waking up, إِيقَاذُ أَهْلِهِ لِقِيَامُ اللَّيْلِ If you're waking up and it is before Fajr to pray your Witr Salah, or you're waking up for Fajr, this is narrated by Abu Dawood from the Hadith of Abu Huraira. قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ the Prophet sallallahu alaihi is making dua. How many of us are missing out on this dua? Subhanallah. Sad. Sad. Rahimallahu rajulan. May Allah have mercy on a man. What kind of a man? Qama min al-layli fasalla. He stood up at night to pray to Allah. Qama min al-layli fasalla. Wa aiqadha amra'atahu. And he woke up his wife. And he woke up his wife. Fa in abat, if she refuses, nadoja fi wajhiha al ma'a, he sprinkled some water on her face. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is making du'a. <coughs> the greatest thing you need, me and you, is what? What is the greatest thing you need? The rahma of Allah. Nothing better than that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said what? لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَادُكُمْ لَنْ يَدْخُلَ أَحَادُكُمْ عَمَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ None of you will be entered into Jannah because of his actions. They said, وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Not even you. قَالَ وَلَا أَنَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِي اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَتِي Except if Allah covers me in his rahma, mercy. That rahma, mercy. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, says, is making dua, may Allah have mercy. On who? A man who wakes up to pray at night and wakes up his wife. If she refuses, sprinkle some water on her face. And then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, rahim allahum ra'atan, may Allah have mercy on the woman. What kind of a woman? Qamat min al-layli. Fasallat. She stood up at night to pray. وَأَيْقَذَتْ زَوْجَهَا And then she woke up her husband. فَإِنْ أَبَا If he refuses, نَضَجَتْ فِي وَجْهِهِ الْمَاءَ She sprinkled some water on his face. These are the houses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts his mercy in them. These are the houses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses them. These are the houses Allah gives them a good life, a happy life. But if the houses are only music, and TV, then we should not complain. We should not complain. So, even let's say you don't wake up to pray at night, this should be applied for Salatul Fajr, which is more important than standing up at night prayer. Standing up at night prayer. So these are the manners <coughs> of waking up. Number one, is the dhikr of Allah. Number one is the dhikr of Allah. Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'da ma matana wa ilayhi al-nushur. Number two is to, if you go to the washroom, is to wash your hands three times. Number three, you draw water into your nose and blow it out three times. Number four, you make wudu. You make wudu. Number five, which can be before wudu or after, you use the siwak, you brush your teeth. You brush your teeth. Number six, you wake up your family. Whether it is your wife or if their children are supposed to start praying, they're seven years or older, then you wake them up. One of the major mistakes we have in our Muslim families all over the world is that the children are exempt from Salatul Fajr. I don't know who gave us this revelation. Train them since they are young, so that when they are older, they wake you up. Start teaching our children about Salah when they are seven. The Prophet is saying, When they reach ten, seven to ten, how many years? There is three years. When the time reaches when they are 10, they should be ready. Enough training for three years. If they don't pray when they are, when they are 10, discipline them. 
every parent should ask himself or herself, are you practicing that? So these are the manners of waking up. And then you wake them up, your family. Six or seven points. Seven points, Islamic manners of waking up. The Islamic manners of waking up. Do you have any questions specifically about this? Specifically about this? Naam, Sheikh. That is coming. The manners of the washroom is next. Next, inshallah, after Maghrib, we discuss the manners of the, the washroom. And we have around 16 points there, inshallah. That is different. Bismillah is specifically for Allah. Yeah. Because the name of Allah, it is a name of Barak. The name of Allah is the greatest name. The name of Allah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Ismun al-Musamma. It is one thing. So you're actually saying, I'm seeking blessings by Allah. You cannot use that for anyone else. You can use it in a language, in a linguistic sense by saying, uh, by my name and the name of the brothers it means I'm mentioning my name and the name of these guys to welcome you no. I represent myself on behalf of myself it does not apply on this side this side is you're seeking barakah you're seeking the help of Allah you're seeking uh, the, the permission of Allah to do this action now last question Salatul Maghrib is <coughs> now. Now. Uh. Uh, you know you wash your hands? Aren't you going to wash your hands for wudu? Aren't you going to wash your hands for wudu? Yes, you are going to wash your hands for wudu. But that is for wudu. And this is before wudu. And this is only when you wake up. When we, I mention why. Because most Muslims, they live in lands, they don't have tap water. So you don't put your hand in the vessel of water before you wash it you wash it while making wudu you can put your hand in the in the vessel of water now a question may come some might ask so this this sunnah of washing the hands when waking up and blowing water into the nose three times is it only waking up from night at night the sleep at night or even if you take a nap at at daytime Sheikh ibn Uthaymin, rahimahullah, he says, the hadith says, uh, فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَدْرِي أَيْنَ بَاتَتْ يَادَهُ Al-Baytuta is only for night. That's what they say. So that is only for the night. Lakin, other scholars, they say, لا, Al-Illa is for what? You don't know where your hands were. And this exists in any kind of sleep. So Allahu A'lam, Allahu A'lam, and the last time Sheikh Ali Al-Halabi was here, Hafizahullah, we had this small discussion, and he said, no, that's what the Harid says, you don't know where your hand is, it means general. And it makes sense, it makes sense. Naam, subhanakallahumma bihamdika, shadu la ilaha ila anta, astaghfiruka tibu laik, I'm happy to see you also. We'll continue after Maghrib. Allah 
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله 